this part is quite comfortable to play if you coordinate motions properly. If you learn it uh, first coordinating your motions in a correct way. So uh, whenever you have such double notes, that's a very general tip, uh, which you can apply not only to this piece, but to the vast majority of uh, similar uh, pieces that uh, employ similar technique. Uh, that wider interval, you play on a pull-in motion. So imagine your elbow goes a little bit back. And the wrist should be quite low, close to the level of the keys. And the second, the narrower interval, you play on a pushing motion in the keyboard, so your elbow goes a little bit forward, but the tension should be uh, towards your wrist, so the wrist doesn't go up, so that's wrong, yeah? If you, if you play like that, this is wrong because the wrist should not go uh, up much. It can go just a little bit, tiny bit more, but not higher than the knuckles. Never, yeah? Not like that. So. so at first you have to practice in a moderate tempo coordinating those motions. What is very important about these motions in and out that they are very targeted, they are functional. So you don't move after the hit. You move only while you hit the key. In, and you stop. Out, in, and you stop. So there is no sloppy rounded motions like around after the hit. This is wrong, yeah? If you move uh, between hits, you move only while you hit the key and then you stay, you rest. And you see that these motions are really tiny. Of course, you can exaggerate them in a slower tempo just to get the idea, but ultimately they will be really small. You can notice them if I point your attention to them, but they are not actually visible much. <clears throat> and you go through the whole piece, through all similar spots with double notes um, like that. And both hands do same thing, of course, yeah? yeah. So that's a synchronized motion between hands. Then, of course, we don't connect um, uh, things like, for example, between bars four and five. You at first release and then you move to the next position. So you don't try to provide physical legato in uh, spots which are uncomfortable or for example in bars uh, 15, 16. Here this spot is really uncomfortable if you try to provide physical legato. That's why you can rely on pedal for that in case you want to play it legato. But uh, you have to learn with the gap. Stop before that in natural and then continue after you have released your hands and allow them to approach the next position. So you work with gaps before you move to the next position. Release. Release. And this is an interesting spot in the left hand because the pattern changes. Yeah, and this is not very comfortable, it might be a little bit confusing. That's why same thing. Stop, and then you start a new motion when the pattern changes. Three notes, stop, release, and then you start a new. And you practice that separately. With a gap. Like that. And only then you continue. Yeah, but nevertheless, marking that 16 note a tiny bit just to make it clear for yourself that you have a new element. Pop, 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 pop. Then it will feel easier. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah, so you mark things when you learn them. Of course, then you don't have to mark them if that doesn't suit your interpretation. But for learning purposes, it's very, uh, it's very helpful to make your brain understand where one element ends and when the other one starts. Then, of course, when we have uh, wider spots, like uh, these tense spots, for some people it might be really difficult to play them. Like, I'm lucky to be able to uh, take these notes together, but let's say this spot, here I can't really take that, it's, it's a struggle, so I have to break it. And when we break such things, we have to calculate the 
minimal trajectory, like to move as little as possible, because quite often people start being nervous about such spots, so they play something like they move way too much, and then they miss. So your task is to calculate uh, how little you are able to move here. And it's not about distance, uh, even if we play something like something like that with G flat, for example, theoretically. Nevertheless, there is a way to calculate the most uh, efficient movement. The most important is just not to move after the head. So you don't follow inertia. You reach that note, ba -bam, and you stay. You don't go further. You see? Your task is to move as little as possible here and calculate really how much you have to move like left right and of course you keep the hand palm open releasing the stress when you have that middle note played with the second finger yeah so that's important as well and then we move to a absolute killer to a passage that is almost unplayable but nevertheless we have chances to master them in bar number 22, of course. Yes, this spot, which is like hell, really. That's a very tricky one. <clears throat> what we can do, uh, nevertheless, I would suggest you to learn it first, bre breaking it into groups and coordinating motions as well. So you play four notes, that's easy. Out, in, out, in. And then you hit just one chord on, on the second beat. Boom and you jump off. So that's, this chord is played on movement up. Imagine yourself like, imagine your hand being a rabbit that jumps off the ground, boom, like that. And quickly release the hands, uh, release the fingers. Yeah? So you raise the forearm, re uh, releasing the fingers. And then the next group is two chords, A and C. Yeah, these two chords, that's the second group, which you play with fingers one to four, one through five. Yeah, so stop, release properly, and then and you see, you play also these two chords on movements down, up. So it's up, down, up. And then you have a ricochet motion. So one momentum. Quickly releasing the fingers between chords. Like that. So we have da um, up, down, up, ricochet. So at first give yourself enough time, uh, good gaps so you would be able to control that you really properly release fingers between those groups and that you move in in this particular way up down up ricochet and then gradually but that release after the first chord here is absolutely essential yeah so even when you will play that in a real tempo you have to give yourself just a tiny bit of time after this chord while you go up and release your hand. And of course, you uh, don't let yourself, like never ever you let yourself to practice this spot through tension. Your task is to implement these motions to be able to always release your fingers between chords, between groups. Uh, and then you just make it faster and faster every day, just a tiny bit faster, but preserving those comfortable sensations. So after all, you will be able to play that in a real tempo. Uh, very efficiently. What is also important to consider here that this is actually a climax, a climax of, of the whole 24 bar section. So this part might sound quite like really pathetic. And for that, we also can take ch kind of additional time for that spot. And like something like that, yeah? And uh, it will sound actually good if you ground yourself properly, if you provide a good, like, supported sound and also take some additional time, ta -ta 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 -ta, then, of course, uh, it might actually benefit your performance by also uh, assisting you to play it more efficiently. Next section, I would suggest you to learn the left hand uh, providing a good support for the fifth finger. Here, just really stand on it when you learn use rotation, of course, and stability in the fifth uh, finger knuckle here. It will ground yourself, it will counterbalance all that stuff uh, which you have at the right side um, of the keyboard and it will give you a grounded sensation. 
side. Also, you can play with that uh, lower voice, uh, like syncopating those notes a bit more. Which is easy to do if you have enough stability in that finger, which is difficult to do if you have any kind of tension and afraid to really reach the bottom of the key with that fifth finger. <laughs> 